It's my privilege to be able to um, start off the presentations. Um, just a little bit to explain about the Heroes for Young Hearts Awards, which recognize individuals who demonstrate a continuous commitment to their local community to raise awareness of sudden cardiac arrest in youth by taking specific actions that support the Parent Heart Watch mission of protecting youth from sudden cardiac arrest and preventable sudden cardiac death. The first award of the evening goes to our medical advocacy champion. While Sean Seema might be most readily known as the dad of young SEA survivor Lexi Seema, Sean was nominated for this award because since his daughter's life was saved, he has never stopped working to eliminate sudden cardiac arrest in youth. He's been a pivotal player for who we play for, or as they describe it, their secret sauce volunteering at 50 plus heart screenings and working with families to ensure they have the proper follow-up care needed after being flagged with an abnormal ECG. No matter their level of insurance, geographical location, and in some cases, language barriers. He's been instrumental in implementing new COVID-19 screening safety protocol and worked year round to fundraise thousands of dollars to ensure that an ECG is available to any child who otherwise could not afford it. Sean led the effort to rally hundreds in the community to influence the school board to require heart screenings in Brevard County. He also worked to make this a requirement across Central Florida. He gave over 20 notably powerful presentations to local and national groups last year and continues to no donate AEDs and CPR training to hundreds. He's been recognized nationally by the uh, Veterans Administration for his work on sudden cardiac arrest and in the workplace as a healthcare provider. He's appeared in a half a dozen new segments advocating for sudden cardiac arrest prevention. He's affected significant policy change in Florida through his work with Senator Baxley and House Education <laughs> Committee on the CPR bill, which was just introduced on December 16, 2020. He also worked with Representative Fred Hawkins on um, the, the House side to introduce a bill that includes not only CPR, but also ECG screening. Sean was instrumental in passing the Zach Martin bill in Florida and has worked on a national level with Congressman Al Lawson's office for sudden cardiac arrest awareness, in addition to affecting hard hitting presentation of who we play for research for the American Academy of Pediatrics National Conference and Exhibition. For this and so many more reasons, we are really psyched to present Sean Sima with the 2021 Hero for Young Hearts Award for Medical Champion Advocacy. Thank you. Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, this is one of the greatest honors of my life, honestly. I've, I've, I've been through a lot and I've seen a lot. I've uh, been in, in rooms with generals doing war planning. Uh, I've been in medical, you know, ER saving lives. Uh, I've seen troops, you know, come in, uh, blown up and, and, and you know, I've seen our troops pass away and there's been many places uh, that I've been, but honestly, uh, this is the most sacred grounds. I I'm very depressed, honestly, that we're not all together. You know, four years ago, uh, we went to Savannah. That was our first uh, parent heart watch. And um, immediately I felt like family. I felt love. Uh, there was no black, white, Asian. We were just a bunch of parents. Uh, who had, you know, a couple things in common, uh, you know, all of us. I remember sitting in my first one and thinking, you know what, every single parent in this room right now has gotten that call or they were there to see their young kid uh, suffer sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, I remember thinking we've all sat in that emergency room wondering and praying, you know, God give us back our loved one. Um, you know, we all prayed like hell and we all wondered like what, what happened to us? Um, and that's something uh, that's a common bond that nobody in this world can you know, ever understand. All of us have been in shock. Like I tell everybody, 
Uh, it would make more sense if, if the guy knocked on the door and said, hey, your kid was in a car wreck. But all of our healthy, young, beautiful children to just all of a sudden not be in this world, uh, it doesn't make sense. And, and, and I always hold on to that. And I, every time I've walked through the doors, I've been to three in person, and this is my fourth. It's been an instant connection and an instant family. And uh, I really miss that. We went to Italy last year and it didn't compare to that three day weekend at Parent Heart Watch. It sounds crazy, uh, but those of us that live, eat and breathe, you know, sudden cardiac arrest and our kids, uh, we get it. Um, for, for us, uh, for those that don't know, my wife should really be sitting here, Stacy. Uh, she's is more instrumental than I am. I just have the big mouth. You know, they, they call me the big mouth or the bulldog because I don't mind getting up in front of people. But you have heard Lexi's story. And if you're new, uh, I'll do a quick rehash. Uh, 2016, we were the All-American family. Uh, I retired from the Air Force. Uh, 20 years, I retired as an officer. I had been a medical provider I've done well over, you know, 12, 1500 school physicals, probably 5,000 adult physicals. And uh, without warning, my young, healthy, just like everybody on this call, my young, healthy, you know, daughter suffered sudden cardiac arrest one night in the gym. It took 15 minutes for the ambulance to get there. And if it wasn't for a couple folks in the gym that night and for the owner of the gym uh, just changing out the batteries, my daughter would be dead. And uh, ever since then, we've been on a mission. We've linked up with who we play for and uh, we've been working to save lives ever since. Um, I love being a part of this group. Yeah. I'm serving shoulder to shoulder yeah. with every single one of you. Uh, I I get frustrated often because I've been battling and battling, just like all of you in our state, to try to get people to understand us. But I take a couple steps back. As I said, I was a guy that did, you know, I'll say 1,200 physicals. And by rights, with that stethoscope, I missed four kids. And I think about them all the time. So I, I, I step back and I try to give people the benefit of the doubt but it's up to us to educate. Nobody can ever deny the facts. We're not making this stuff up. We're just not getting much help getting it out there. And that's why we must band together and work together uh, to do this. Martha, uh, Evan, who we play for, um, all of those families out there that I reach out to and that we, we correspond and we support each other and we share information, thank you. Uh, I'm so proud to be a part of this group. My family, there's just, there's just no words. Lexi, you're the wind beneath my wings. I will tell you, and she said it perfectly. I watched her do a news interview uh, two years ago. And um, when she was talking, she told the guy that was doing the interview that she and my daughter who suffered sudden cardiac arrest and who now has a defibrillator in her chest, and is gonna need surgery uh, every you know, seven to 10 years told the guy, I wouldn't change a thing that happened to me. And that's exactly how I feel. I never wanted to say it, but it, I feel because although on the outside, it seemed like we had it all, all American family with a beautiful home and a beautiful car and a pool and you name it. I was living, but I wasn't truly living. I was inhaling and exhaling but I wasn't breathing. And this has given me life. It's given our family life. It's given us something to fight for. To stand so over the shoulder with all of you and share information. Change the world. The world doesn't know about this as long as, as much as we're trying. And the original four that started Parent Heart Watch, thank you. Because I don't know if my daughter would be alive without you all. And uh, I just want to close with this. Uh, we were over at um, the home of who we play for is at this little uh, uh, star place. And as we were talking tonight, there was a guy that was there that, that was talking to us and we told him who we, who we are. And he said, go, just guess what? 
I was just talking to one of my friends and he said that his daughter had a heart screen in Brevard County, which we've made mandatory. And they found a deadly heart condition on this kid and she wound up having surgery and you guys saved her life. That was just after we heard our last speaker at Parent Heart Watch. And it was like, yes, we've all felt that. And we all wanna to continue to battle for that. And, and I love standing shoulder to shoulder. I just hope that if there's ever an apocalypse or the end of the world, that it's Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, because I wanna be with you all in the same room because of you are family. I love you all and I'm so thankful to be a part of this. And I know I've gone way over Martha and I'm really sorry, but this is something that I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life because in the next room sits my daughter who is alive. And this is tough for me. I've always dreaded getting up in front of this group because I know some of you don't have the chance that we have. And that's why every time I get weary and weak or every time I think, how can we go on? I think you know, about the Shawns and the Damanis um, and, and all those other kids that didn't make it. And, that, and I'm gonna close with this. Every time we talk with somebody with who we play for, we always close every interview with us. Who is it that you play for? And I will tell you, I play for all of you, but who I really play for are those 20 families today and tomorrow and the next day that don't know what's about to happen to them. They don't realize it. And that is why we are so important. I love you all and I'll cherish you all forever. And I can't wait to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. We will now move on to our next award. Thank you. So Austin McEnany was a, was a competitive athlete throughout his youth culminated with becoming a four-year starter, three-time All-Big Ten selection, and team captain for the Ohio State Division I soccer team. So he did not receive a heart screening as a collegiate athlete, uh, given many of the NCAA schools had not incorporated ECGs into their sports physicals. Regardless, Austin was not concerned as he never experienced any warning signs, though he admits he likely wouldn't have recognized them given how active he was. So fast forward to age 27, when Austin participated in genetic testing that was identified, um, he, they, that identified a disposition for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM, though he never followed up with a doctor. A few months later, after a bout with the flu, he was jogging with a friend and went into sudden cardiac arrest. She called 911 while a good Samaritan jumped out of uh, his passing car to perform CPR before the EMTs did arrive to shock Austin twice and bring him back to life nearly five minutes later. So a week later, uh, EP Save a Life's medical director, Dr. John Rogers implanted an ICD to protect Austin from future cardiac arrests, which was a miracle when his heart stopped again while at his local gym. So now a two-time survivor of cardiac arrest, Austin still practices an active sports-oriented lifestyle and even enrolled in a Yale research study to evaluate exercise parameters in people with ICDs. So two years ago, he came to his first Parent Heart Watch conference in Houston. And honestly, I could see the look on his, uh, of, of connection on his face. He was simply enthralled with the energy and passion dedicated to sudden cardiac arrest prevention. Now almost 30, he has used the pandemic as a motivator to drive the creation of the Heart Shield Project and establish a nonprofit foundation, which is not an easy thing, as you all know, drafting mission and bylaws and financials and objectives, um, assembling a board and creating a website and putting together outreach materials and fundraising. So he did all that and now he's working to provide CPR AED training to equip all ages with the tools necessary in the case of uh, an emergency. So he also provides BLS provider heart saver CPR AED courses through the American Heart Association, along with uh, free demonstrations to ensure that everyone has the knowledge and confidence to be successful in saving lives. So he's also actively raising money to pursue placing AEDs in Orange County, California and in youth centers. 
and he pursues any speaking engagement he can to raise awareness of SCA. He's even been known to use the gym footage of his second cardiac arrest as compelling evidence of the need to prevent SCA. And you can see that on the Heart Shield Project website. It's, it's crazy. So this guy is always asking questions. He's wanting to learn more about how he can be a driving force in this incredible community that is making such a difference. He is truly representing the next generation of lifesavers. He's committed to collaborating with Parent Heart Watch and other foundations to realize our shared vision to eliminate preventable deaths and disabilities from SCA in youth. So yes, I'm that old. This guy's an adult, but he could be my son. He's a great guy. And for that and so much more, I am pleased to announce Austin Magna as this year's recipient of the Heroes for Young Hearts Adult Advocacy Champion Award. Wow, thank you so much, Maureen. Um, extremely humbled and, uh, and honored. And, and first off, a huge, massive congratulations to Sean extremely well-deserved and uh, definitely inspired me when I, when I first jumped into Parent Heart Watch a couple, couple years ago. So thank you so much for that. Um, first off, I, I know everyone here with Parent Heart Watch definitely deserves this more than me um, for the countless hours and dedication you all put in to, to really the cause of saving young hearts. The crazy thing for me, I actually didn't realize this until about three days ago as I was preparing, is tomorrow is my three-year anniversary from my first cardiac arrest and more importantly, uh, two days after my nephew's uh, third birthday, and I'm actually here at his house celebrating right now. So very happy birthday to Everett. Uh, shout out to him, uh, really excited. So from uh, my first cardiac arrest, I'm forever grateful to my hero, Eric. He was the good Samaritan at the time and now great friend of mine who decided to really just jump out and help a stranger and perform CPR. And also for my good friend, Anna, who was with me to call 911, and the firefighters, a, a young man named Jake, who used the AED to resuscitate me. After experiencing all of this, I was looking for meaning in all that happened. And, and through this, I met Rena Perez. Um, and, and I'm so extremely grateful for Rena and all that she's done. I wouldn't really be here at Parent Heart Watch today if it wasn't for Rena introducing me to EP Save a Life and, and all the amazing work that their team is doing um, with Maureen and Hector and everyone there. So thank you so much. She invited me to Parent Heart Watch and really opened my eyes to this community of champions for, for young hearts and, and really to a place that feels like home. Through my aunt and, and fellow board member, Beth Barker, who, who works for Medtronic and has for, for many years, uh, I was able to meet my new cardiologist, Dr. John Rogers, as, as Maureen was mentioning, who implanted my ICD and has been a, a tremendous inspiration for me, watching him volunteer his time weekend after weekend, reading thousands of EKGs for teens because he wants to make a difference and because he truly loves our youth. To the entire EP Save Life team, to Maureen, thank you so much for the, the introduction and, and for everything you've done for me and for our, our Heart Shield project. To, to Martha for your direction and guidance as we embarked on the creation of Heart Shield Project this past year. And, and also for putting up with all my, uh, as Maureen mentioned, annoying nonstop questions, uh, emails and phone calls to, to really make our foundation a reality. So thank you so much for that. For, for my family to support us in starting Heart Shield, along with our fantastic board of directors, with our medical director, Dr. Mark Lee, uh, Nate Arambula, my Aunt Beth and my, my brother, Matt, your ideas, passion and expertise has really sparked a lot of new initiatives for us and we're, we're really excited to make a difference in Orange County. And for us, you know, we started this, uh, the nonprofit last year. So we're really just getting started. And I know we have a ton of exciting work uh, ahead of us. It's really a privilege for me to have the opportunity to spread awareness in, in my position. And I'm extremely grateful to be a part of our collective mission to, to advocate for young hearts and prevent sudden cardiac death. And really, as, as Sean was mentioning, to do this work in honor of all the young hearts that we have lost way too soon. I wanna quote the uh, theologian and humanitarian Albert Schweitzer. He said, at times our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. 
So truly from me, I just wanna thank all of you, this amazing community of volunteers and advocates for your guidance and inspiration and for lighting the flame within me. I pray we continue to go stronger as the Parent Heart Watch community, support and love one another each other and be a light for each other when we need it most. So thank you very much. All right, now we will, we will move on to our next award winner. And um, that award will be presented by Dr. Victoria Vetter. All right, thanks Martha and congratulations to all of the uh, prior uh, uh, award winners. I am um, have a privilege to present this uh, Youth Advocacy Champion Award to Zayden Mason. I hope Zayden that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Zayden has a long family history of loving basketball, which started young, culminating with a rigorous exercise program during middle school as part of a plan to play in college. During a training session, however, something went wrong with his heart. And upon evaluation, he learned he had a heart condition that put him at risk for sudden death. That diagnosis, needless to say, led to a personal and family crisis. Aiden felt his identity as a student athlete was at risk and his parents were split as we often are as parents with strong feelings on opposite sides about whether he should continue to play sports. As one medical evaluation led to another with multiple second opinions, he heard repeatedly from various pediatric cardiologists about his heart condition and the problem of sudden cardiac arrest in youth. Thus, he was uniquely prepared to make sudden cardiac arrest prevention in youth a part of two academic projects at school, which led to multiple awards and in turn led to a deeper desire to truly champion prevention in his community. Rather than spend the first year with his new diagnosis, retreating inward or going into de denial, he decided to change the way the community felt about loss, the sudden cardiac arrest and, arrest and use. He learned about Project Adam, our national program, uh, which is a school prevention program uh, that began in Whitefish Bay High School. And that high school, however, did not at that time have a heart safe school designation. So he worked in collaboration with his school nurse, Kathleen Rober, and started uh, a deliberate march toward making his school the first heart safe school in the area. His efforts included drafting a cardiac response proposal, creating visual algorithms that to this day sit in every classroom and presenting to the school safety committee and meeting with senior school administrators. This as a high school student to convince them that this initiative was more important than the many other competing demands in the teachers and the staff's time and attention. By March 2018, he did it and his school achieved heart state school designation. But he wanted to do more. He took CPR AED course for first responders and became certified. He volunteered in CPR training events with Project Adam, whether they were at the state fair, the zoo, or the local professional sporting events. He also secured the opportunity to participate on the state committee, Heart Safe Wisconsin. He approached the Milwaukee North Shore Rotary Club, which has an affiliation with eight local high schools, for financial support to host a workshop to convert each of those schools to heart safe status, as well as half a dozen others who were in attendance. This was the first time that Project Adam had held a multi-school school district training workshop and it was received with great enthusiasm by participants, as was a virtual follow-up meeting he organized so that the COVID pandemic wouldn't hold back progress. An additional outcome is that Rotary approached Zayden to start an interact club on campus, which he and three of his friends have such since launched. Although he is only 16 year old, he will continue to be an ardent advocate of Parent Heart Watch's mission of protecting youth from sudden cardiac arrest, first and foremost, by raising awareness of the problem and providing it with a human face and a human story. For these reasons and many more, we truly believe Zayden Mason is so deserving the Heroes for Young Hearts Youth Advocacy Champion Award. Congratulations, Zayden. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank the two people who have nominated me for this prestigious award, uh, Kathleen Rober, the head nurse uh, at my high school, and Allie Thompson, the national administrator for Project Adam, um, the program that I worked with. Um, without their help, not only would I not be standing or talking to you today, but I also would not have been able to complete the work that has led me to this award. 
So my journey began during my eighth grade year when I was presented with the school assignment of creating a project based on any interest that I may have had. Having recently been, received the diagnosis of LVNC, which I learned puts me at a higher risk of sudden cardiac arrest, I became aware of the alarming number of student athletes and young people who die each year while playing sports they love. I also learned how many of these teenage deaths were avoidable with the use of CPR and a nearby AED. Upset about these avoidable deaths, I figured that there must be some way to educate people about sudden cardiac arrest in young people. I quickly learned Project Adam provides many services, including supporting schools and becoming better prepared to deal with an SCA on their campus. And this ultimately leads to a heart safe school designation. As you heard, this designation is given to a school when the school meets requirements, such as having a certain number of ADs within the building, having enough staff certified in CPR and AD usage, having an effective emergency response plan and carrying out regular emergency drills among other things. I knew my school had enough AEDs, but I wasn't sure people would feel confident in knowing if, when, and how to use them if ever needed. I figured that helping my school become heart safe would not only fulfill my project requirement, but it would potentially help me or others like me in the future. As such, I reached out to Ms. Rober and Ms. Thompson, and after a lot of meetings, nine months later, our school received the heart safe school designation. However, I subsequently learned that unfortunately, our school was the first school in our area to become a heart safe school. Even the school whose student death had inspired the creation of Project Adam had yet to become heart safe. Seeing what a difference a little bit of knowledge and training can have on making people want to get involved and help made me want to expand out and help as many other schools become heart safe as possible. COVID unfortunately has significantly delayed our goals as it has appropriately diverted the school nurses attention to helping manage the pandemic. However, I think it is even more important now given what we have learned about COVID attacking the heart and making youth without underlying heart conditions at risk of SCA that schools realize what a critical role they play in saving lives. Especially since during normal times, up to 20% of our population is in a school setting at, if, at any given time. Finally, I would like to say thank you to Ms. Lopez Anderson and Parent Art Watch for all they have done to help kids like me for providing programs such as this that let kids like me know they actually can make a difference by seeing others set an example before them. And finally, for recognizing my efforts with this award. Thank you. Thank you, Zayden. Congratulations. We really appreciate your efforts. So um, this evening's um, next award is the Young uh, Survivor Award. Julieta, a 16-year-old athlete, played on the varsity team as a freshman at the Woodlands High School and for the elite team at Houston Juniors Volleyball for seven years. She has been monitored by a cardiologist for arrhythmias since birth, but that never held her back from doing anything. On May 3rd, 2020, Julieta collapsed in cardiac arrest while working out at home with her sister. Not knowing what was happening, her sister Patty screamed for her mother upstairs and quickly called 911. Patty was guided by the 911 dispatcher on how to perform CPR on Julieta until EMS arrived approximately six minutes later. Her mother and sister watched as EMS responders worked to bring her back after approximately 23 minutes without a pulse. Her father and brother felt helpless as they received the news while in another country. She was transported to the hospital where she became unstable again due to the trauma caused by the vigorous resuscitation procedure. Because of this, doctors made the decision to put her in a medically induced coma and performed an emergency extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, also known as ECMO procedure. The ECMO machine pumped and oxygenated Julieta's blood outside the body, allowing her and her lungs to rest. After Julieta came out of the medically induced coma and ECMO, she had surgery to place an <laughs> defibrillator, ICD. After this surgery, and when she thought that she was close to going home, Julieta <laughs> developed pancreatitis, leaving her in unmanageable pain. <laughs> She spent a total, a total of three weeks at the hospital, two weeks in the ICU 
and one week in medically induced coma and on ECMO. On May 27th, she got officially cleared to go home to her family. Since her cardiac arrest, now remember, May 3rd, 2020, that's just months ago. And after realizing how prevalent of an issue this is, Julieta, with the support of her sister, Patty, was connected with many Parent Heart Watch members and others who she refers to as a community of change makers. She has gathered detailed information and photos about her event, sudden cardiac arrest stats, put together a beautiful, informative, and inspiring website for her, her initiative, Surviving Sudden Cardiac Arrest or Surviving SEA. It is truly admirable what she has already accomplished since her own cardiac arrest and what she's striving for. We are honored to present her with this year's Hero for Young Hearts Young Survivor Champion Award. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank Ms. Martha for granting me this award. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, ever since birth, I was diagnosed with arrhythmia, and I never really knew what it was or what I was susceptible for. And I definitely didn't know that SEA was in my play of cards in the future. I was a high-intensity athlete, and I never thought that something, that something like this could happen to me. Um, I had my sudden cardiac arrest on May 3rd of 2020, like you mentioned, and my mom and my sister witnessed it and they saved my life. So I'm incredibly in debt to them and the medical staff who brought me back to life and reacted so quickly um, after 23 minutes of not having a pulse. Um, like you mentioned, I spent about three weeks in the hospital and I was very lost about what had really happened to me and what I had just gone through and how big of a deal it was. Um, I was definitely a very hard journey for me and my family, but after educating ourselves about SEA and what it really is, we realized that we had some work to do. I'm very new to this whole world of being a sudden cardiac arrest survivor and meeting all these wonderful people, um, but I'm very blessed to be part of such an amazing and supportive community like this one. I'm starting and hopefully releasing soon a nonprofit foundation called Surviving SEA um, with my 21 year old sister, who's the one that witnessed my sudden cardiac arrest and saved my life to bring more awareness to SEA and how real it is and how it doesn't care about who you are and what, what you're doing. It, it can just get you at any time. I hope to inspire change in others and give more people a second chance like the one that I got and to even accomplish a margin of the impact that everyone here has done. Thank you so much once again. My family and I are honored to receive this beautiful award. Thank you. Thank you, Julieta. Thank you for all your efforts. And um, it's really inspiring to see young people um, really get involved in our cause. You have the ability of reaching your peers in a way that us um, older adults, <laughs> I don't wanna say old people, older adults can't. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, this year, um, next award uh, will be presented by our board chair, Karen Akampora. So what an honor I have to give this award to Dr. Idris, who is a cardiologist, an electrophysiologist, and a biomed biomedical engineer who is admired and respected by his colleagues and staff. He is loved by his patients and their families for his bedside manner, genuine care, and for being generous with his time. He is also the co-director of the Duke Affiliate for Project Adam, North Carolina. He is the principal investigator for the National Cardiac Screening Warehouse Pilot Study to advance the prevention of sudden cardiac death in all youth. He has been a member of our esteemed medical advisory board since 2017. Parent Heart Watch first met Dr. Idris back in 2014 through the Cardiac Safety Research Consortium, also known as the CSRC. Dr. Idris was the co-chair of the planning committee for a think tank on the prevention of sudden cardiac death in the young. Developing a rationale, reliable and sustainable national health care resource. The first think tank was held in February 20th, 2015, and a white paper was published in August of 2017. In January 2016, he attended his first annual Heart to Heart, where he met families affected by sudden cardiac arrest or a heart condition and learned about their efforts to protect and save lives. Being a part of Heart to Heart made him even more passionate about his work and our collective mission. A second think tank sponsored by the 
and the FDA convened the FDA on February 18, 2016, with that paper published in These think tanks led to the establishment of the National Cardiac Screening Warehouse Pilot, which includes 12 parent heart watch member foundations as partners contributing screening data, in addition to academic and industry leaders. As part of the pilot, Dr. Idris traveled to California and Alabama in early 2020 to attend community heart screening events to better understand both event flow and test how scannable forms could improve data collection for the screening pilot. Then the, the pandemic paralyzed our nation and the world. But Dr. Idris utilized this time to engage with pilot participants and their medical directors and advance other aspects of the pilot, which was elevated by an invitation he received to present at FDA's inaugural extramural research science day on the prevention of sudden cardiac death in the young. With the official launch of the National Cardiac Screening Warehouse pilot didn't happen until, Octo until October 2020, it has been in the works for several years. Dr. Idris has been stalwart in his commitment to evolve our knowledge of sudden cardiac arrest prevention in all youth, not just student athletes. We know the impact his collaborations with academic, industry, public, nonprofit, and government entities will transcend local, state, and national borders all the children and the families of the world will be better for it. We are honored to present him with this year's Founders Award. Uh, I am incredibly humbled. This is, a, this is the award that came and thank you for sending it. Um, this is an incredible honor. Uh, you know, I was uh, completely speechless when, you know, Martha sent the email uh, that I was given, being given this award. And, you know, the fact that this is the Founders Award is just incredibly meaningful to me. Uh, because the founders and, you know, of course, most of you are brought together and linked by the unimaginable. Um, and as you heard, uh, my journey with Parent Heart Watch started about six years ago uh, because of Sharon Bates, you know, reaching out and starting a conversation about screening electrocardiograms and research. Um, and that seed was planted in the organization Cardiac Safety Research Consortium at Duke and actually something I didn't even really know about. Uh, before this happened. But I was asked to lead the investigation into what could be done. And I actually had no idea what I was getting into. Um, and as you heard, we ran not multiple national meetings uh, with international people and developed a plan. And it's now you know, evolved into the establishment of a national debate database of cardiac screening um, that's recognized by the FDA, that's including you all and industry partners from around the world, and it's gonna expand further. So really though, this is not happening because of me. It's not only happening because of an amazing team that I have at Duke that is really tirelessly working on this project. It's because of all of you. Uh, this would never have happened without the collaboration and the incredible dedication of so many of you in Parent Heart Watch and all of you. So, Personally, I'm changed because of you. I came to my first Parent Heart Watch meeting uh, quite naive, um, despite the gray hair. Uh, Dr. Vetter pulled me aside and told me um, about all of you, uh, that the meeting was about really parents and families and less about physicians and academics. And I met with many of you and I learned the stories of your children and your families and I really left changed. Um, and after that, uh, I once gave a presentation to, about this project to pediatric cardiology leaders of the American uh, Association of Pediatrics, American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology. And really at the end of that presentation, one of them who was a friend of mine said, you know, hey, Salim, why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing this knowing that this is gonna take years of effort? Um, and my answer was very simple. Uh, it needs to be done because of all of you and because of the children out there. And so I take care of many children who have survived a cardiac arrest. Um, and sadly, I also have known when children don't survive that cardiac arrest. And I always think about whether it was preventable. And it's the reason I'm doing this. It's the reason I started the North Carolina Project Adam Affiliate. And we just simply must do better and keep going on. 
So I am very lucky to be able to work very closely with many of you across the country. And I am truly honored to be on your medical board and have earned your trust. Um, it's been a long haul and I know many of you would like it to go faster, um, but uh, we're gonna get there. So really thank you again for this really very special award. And I look forward to being with you all next year in person. So thank you. Thank you so much, Salim. We really appreciate you. So I want to uh, share with everyone that um, thanks to the generosity of uh, Zoll Medical as well as um, Safe Station, each one of our Heroes for Young Hearts will be receiving an AED as well as a Safe Station cabinet. So I can't think of uh, a better uh, right award to present them besides the one that they receive with something that they can utilize to continue their amazing efforts in their communities. So um, just wanted to share that with everybody. Thank you again, Zoll Medical, and thank you, um, Safe Station. And thank you to all of our award winners. Um, we really can say thank you enough um, and to our young, folks, Zayden, Julieta, um, we appreciate you, we need you. Uh, please continue uh, to share your stories and uh, to um, know that you can make a difference and, and reach other young people in, in your communities and beyond. And so uh, thank you everyone for this um, opportunity uh, to share this with you. A little disappointed that, uh, or a lot disappointed that we could not uh, stream this in, in YouTube, but um, happy that uh, we could all be together in this space uh, to do this uh, this evening, to share uh, this, uh, this evening with uh, these amazing people. So thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Remember again to visit our exhibitors. And uh, so have a fantastic evening and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.